Hello YouTube, this is Kellett 781 here. Thought I'd try something a little bit different, get down here in front of the camera instead of back behind the uh, porch swing there. Got a couple of complaints that no one can see what the hell I look like, so ta-da, my ugly mug. Anyway, our next video is going to be on Common Man Firearms. And yes, you guessed it, Dave has made a uh, Common Man's Firearms uh, video and uh, lots of good advice and that sort of thing. Once again, I feel like that, uh, you know, uh, I, let, let me just take a moment to say, I don't feel like Dave's leaving anything out, but uh, I think that uh, what people are gonna find is that uh, when you watch his videos, it's not that he's stuck into one mode or anything, it's just that uh, he, he, he doesn't present every scenario. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to touch here. First off, every single one of these guns that I have behind me was purchased for less. It was three fifty or less, and you'll you'll know the one that cost three fifty. All right, uh, when I bring it out. But um, just starting from the front, um, I'm a firm believer, like Dave, in uh, twelve gauge. If you look right now in the current uh, ammunition situation, the thing that uh, you're still able to find is 12 gauge. And he uses a uh, variety of uh, single shot break opens and that sort of thing. And at one point he even mentioned uh, purchasing an uh, extra barrel uh, for uh, one of his single shot shotguns. And, uh, and that's kind of what inspired me to do this video because he purchased that barrel um, for 300 and change. I forget exactly the exact amount. I just remember it being 300. And I was thinking to myself, there's a whole lot of guns that uh, you could get uh, for that amount of money. Um, and so that basically inspired me to make this video because the majority of the guns that I have here were bought for under 300. Uh, let's start off with just your standard Mossberg. 12 gauge shotgun. It's already cleared. Um, this gun right here I bought at a pawn shop for 150 bucks. And it's just a turkey Mossberg. That's all it is. It came from the factory. Already painted this way. Um, you know, all of the videos that Dave shows about the versatility of the 12 gauge and how you can load a uh, single shot uh, 12 gauge, they pretty much apply here. You can easily load your own 12 gauge rounds out in the field, if needs be, and then load them either single into the chamber if you need to, or if you, you know, if your rounds are pretty good and they're going to hold up, you can throw them right in the magazine, and then you've got your, you know, multi-shot capability. This particular 500 is rated for uh, three-inch shells and two and three-fourths. Uh, that means, in the Mossberg terms, you can use magnum rounds in this gun. So if you got plenty of black powder and a good, you know, handful of shells and that sort of thing, and then whatever else you can stuff into the shells, you're pretty much set on ammo. Oh yeah, and you still need primers. Right now, primers are still available, but, you know, hmm, it's one of those things you want to uh, always keep a supply of. It's like this ammunition shortage right now, it didn't really hit me because I have lots of ammo. <laughs> so, that one being that, moving right along, this is basically a Czech retooling of a K98 from World War II. It uses the 8mm Mauser round. This particular gun will knock down anything uh, at, you know, good distance. Uh, the reason I bring it out is because when I purchased it, uh, it was a hundred bucks. That's it. A hundred dollars for this gun. And uh, you'll see plenty of Mausers out there and uh, you'll see higher prices for them, but these Czech Mausers are so common that, you know, they're only commanding, you know, about a hundred dollars for them. Now, the other reason I bring this out is that your survival situation, whatever situation that you're in, 
is pretty much going to be easier or harder and the gear that you carry is going to depend on your location. You know, here in South Georgia, or North Georgia as it were, do I necessarily need a K98 Mauser, you know, to affect my survival? You know, uh, not really. I mean, this is one of these guns that I enjoy having, I enjoy shooting. Uh, 8mm Mauser right now is still very common, very prevalent very easy to get uh, just because not a whole lot of people shoot it <laughs> so I mean even in the current uh, ammo situation I can still get ammo for this gun so if it came down to it and that sort of thing and it was the only one I had ammo for yes by all means it's the one I'm taking with me however uh, given that I have plenty of ammo I wouldn't necessarily bring this gun now if I were in some place like Alaska or you know Montana that sort of thing where larger you know critters are an issue this would be probably one of the rifles I bring with me so but yes common man price I got it used from an army navy surplus store for a hundred bucks very accurate too by the way alright moving right along pistol grip 12 gauge. Now the reason I bring this one out is because this is a type of gun that you could with ease you know throw into a backpack and uh, bring along with you. It's a Mossberg Cruiser same thing you know three inch shells no problem. Uh, would I fire three inch shells without a buttstock? Only if I had to. <laughs> but this would take care of small game camp security, you know, all the versatility of a 12 gauge, but it's easily packable. You know, this can even break down into smaller pieces and I can put it in my pack, no problem. And then also keep a uh, rifle caliber with me, you know, uh, to handle everything else. Like so, like if I were in Montana, for example, these two, you know, though it, it, I'm not joking, it, it would be a uh, quite a load just with the guns, you know, these two together, would make a great combo. Alright, and moving along. Now, I specifically said long guns, but the reason I bring this one out is because this is a uh, a, uh, a Pieta copy of a Remington uh, 44 and it uh, with the uh, cylinder that's currently in it it will shoot it will chamber and fire 45 Colt alright now the reason I bring it out is because of the versatility in that I have both the black powder and the 45 Colt cylinder for this gun alright and that means that if I should run out of you know uh, Colt rounds I can still use it you know via uh, black powder and if you have a 45 Colt rifle and the reason I didn't bring the 45 Colt rifle out is because it's not terribly common man you know that being said this particular gun I actually have another one of these that cost me hundred and twenty bucks this one right here uh, cost me three hundred and the only reason that it cost me three hundred is because of this live fire cylinder all right, this particular model actually goes for quite a bit more, but the place I bought it from um, had it drastically marked, you know, just because they didn't quite know what they were looking at when they put it up for sale, I guess. But I fired it. It's really accurate, both in black powder and in 45 Colt. And the 45 Colts are pretty hard hitting around. So if you got plenty of ammunition for your 45 Colt rifle, this makes a great addition to that. Alright, moving along. Your standard Ruger 1022. Enough cannot be said about these rifles. So much so that in the current uh, ammunition uh, crisis, this is one of the rifles that's actually hard to get, as well as the ammunition for it. Luckily, I have plenty of ammo for it, but. Um, you know, this is one of those situations that 
Like here in South Georgia, pretty much what I would have with me in a bug out scenario, self reliance scenario, I would probably team these two up right here. You know, just depending on what's going on. You know, but it would probably be these two. I would probably have this and then this. You know, 22 ammos. Uh, cheap when you can get it. <laughs> it was cheap before. I'm sure when it comes back, it'll be, you know, just as cheap. All right, and that brings us to last but not least. Oh, and the uh, 22, uh, the t Ruger 1022 there was actually uh, passed down to me. I've had that since I was 12 years old. So, <laughs> all right, last but not least, you know, everyone sees AK rifle. They're like, oh. What's it good for? This gun, well placed shots, will take down anything. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. 7.62 by 39, which is the ammunition for this gun, is still relatively inexpensive uh, when you can get it. It's not as nearly as hard to find as um, 223, 556. Um, it has hit power. You know, this particular rifle is accurate out to 150 yards with about a 2, 3 inch MOA. Um, the reason I bring it out mainly is because this particular gun, when I purchased it, uh, which is about 7 years ago, it was 350 bucks. And you can still find them. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't have a whole lot of respect for the uh, Wasser rifles and this is a Romanian one. Um, mine's held up great. It's extremely accurate. I've taken down plenty of deer with it. I use it as a home defense weapon. Uh, once again, a great combo. Right here. You know, you can go single shot, you know, uh, 12 gauge, and uh, get your sleeve inserts and what have you that fire a, a variety of rifled rounds. Um, or you can throw on a little bit more weight and add some more, you know, <laughs> uh, versatility to your gear and that sort of thing by carrying two different guns, or even if you're really up to it, carrying three. Me, about the most I would carry would be two. And just depending on the situation, you know, what kind of bug out scenario it was, what kind of bush crafting scenario it was, this and the uh, pump 12 gauge. You know, if it came down to it and I really needed to pack a lot of stuff, at the end of the day, it would just be this Mossberg 500. You know, 12 gauge is king. It is the most versatile round that there is. I can take down anything with this and it'd still be edible. <laughs> From deer to squirrel. Uh, anyway, that's just my take on common man guns. You know, like I said, I didn't spend more than $350 on any of these. This one being the most expensive. Of course, I have other guns that I spent quite a bit of money on, but, you know, all of those, you know, they don't really get used much and that sort of thing just because, you know, they're kind of high dollar. These are my workhorses right here, you know. Between uh, Civil War reenacting, which would be that black powder gun, I also have a... Um, percussion cap musket which I have plenty of rounds for that as well yeah I won't own a gun without <laughs> having rounds for it I don't care what it is <laughs> you know that one actually wouldn't be so bad I mean if the uh, if the scenario turned long term you know I can easily cast bullets for that as well as you know I do have a good supply of a uh, you know primer caps for it but anyway, that's just my take on it. Thank you for watching. I'm Kellett781, and we'll be back with you soon for another video.